What is going on? Locked on Bulldogs talking about Vanderbilt. Yes, Vanderbilt. Um, because we have to, we need to, it has to happen. And we're going to try to preview as much as we can, because as we've seen this season, do not take people lightly here on Locked on Bulldog. You are Locked on Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on? Clint here with Locked On Bulldogs, your team every single day, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Uh, we are glad to be supported. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. More on them in a moment. But uh, Vanderbilt Week, uh, look, we're coming off of Auburn. I told you that this rushing attack is absolute dynamite in Todd Munkin's hands. Y'all screwed up. Y'all overcompensated and took away pass plays, and he went back to the run play. And just let you guys know, that, that's on you, DCs of Southeastern Conference teams and rest of America, because now Todd Munkin had to. You forced him to rely on the run game, and it turns out, oh, that run ga- game can play. We talked about that. Today, we're going to talk about why Georgia shouldn't overlook Vanderbilt. Uh, duh, it's called Mizzou. It's called Kent State, but even more to the point. Two, I'm going to let you know, who Vanderbilt is, and this just in, uh, they're improved. Uh, and then lastly, going to talk about where Georgia is, update you on some in- injuries as well as talk about how that ram- those ramifications affect the game this Saturday. But let's talk about why we shouldn't overlook. Uh, because it's SEC football. That's why. Because we haphazardly went into Kent State. Bad idea. Bad idea. We haphazardly went into Mizzou. Bad idea. Uh, we saw the the effects of that. We saw what could happen in those situations. It wasn't great. It wasn't good. It wasn't what we wanted to see happen. Uh, and so Georgia, look, uh, they're going to show up. We're rolling. We got some confidence now. Uh, part of coaching is knowing when to press players and when to back off players. And I think this week, coach is going to know when to back off players just a smidge, just a little bit to give that encouraging note, not so much of a challenge note. And you heard from Kirby uh, in the presser. Which, by the way, if you are a media person and a presser with Kirby, you have the audacity to raise your hand and ask a question about triple coverage. Ooh, uh, Kirby can't stand media people. I don't know if you guys catch this. He can't stand media people. He hates those pressers because what he wants to talk about, he wants to talk shop. He wants to talk football. He's not Nick Saban. He's not in love with the camera and in love with his own voice. He wants to talk shop. He wants to talk football all day long. And media guys don't want to talk football. They want to talk storylines and uh, they want to talk about where you weren't good. Kirby came out and said, look, um, no such thing as triple coverage. That means somebody is flying wide open down the field and Stets is going to get him the ball. Now, again, admittedly, many of you are screaming into your into your speakers right now, into your headphones. Uh, yes, Stets has missed several wide open plays. I I feel you. I hear you. But we got some confidence. Now Stetson, now this offensive line, knows what they can do against a good unit in Auburn defense. There's there's nothing that I'm going to shy away from. It's a good unit. Um, now, not great unit, not fantastic unit, but good unit nonetheless. And I think this offensive line with Stetson, with Monk doing what they need to do, I'm happy going into this week. I'm happy where we are at. And it's only going to get better because if we can go back and work on some things, execute some possible bubble screens that are not just broadcast for all the world to see. Todd, brother, help me out, man. Can we can we can we get some some better understanding of when to throw the screen, when to use motion into your, uh, you know, um, uh, running attack and then pass off of that as well. But I think this week uh, against Vanderbilt, it's another get right week. It's another work on fundamentals. It's another absolute hog Molly esque type game. I I see nothing that's going to change from last week. If only going to get better. Uh, I think the score of this game, the point spread is a lot of a po- lot of points, y'all. So many points. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow talking locks and giving official predictions. But uh, I think more than anything, why we shouldn't sleepwalk is because Georgia knows that we can't take a stumble, we can't take a step back, and 
and we're looking at the teeth of our schedule coming up. We need to get healthy and we need to go into the bye week feeling great, not with a letdown, not with an egg, not with a ho-hum effort. We need to go in on a high note so that practice next week can be nothing but joy looking at Florida, take a weekend off, get the bodies right. Uh, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. So this is a building block setting us up for that bye week so that we can do everything that we need to do for Florida. This is a lot of cleanup so that when that those packages, when the defensive packages come in, when the offensive packages come in next week for Florida, they're going to be a little different that Todd makes changes, that Shu makes some changes as Ryan Davis gets some more running inside linebacker because it looks like Smile is not going to be going again. Again, we'll get back to that in the third segment. Uh, this, is a, this is another get right game. So get right, Georgia, because you don't have many of these. Because Tennessee is looming, because Kentucky is looming. Don't sleep. That's why Vanderbilt is an important week and some important things to look at. I want to see continuation of offensive line. I want to see Robinson and Kenny Mack and Dejon continue to ground and pound. And I want to see Stetson hit five deep balls where he's not overshooting receivers. If I, if I see five, a handful of deep balls in which he's not overcompensating, I, I'm going to feel good heading into the bye week. That's what I need to see, and that's what's important. Uh, we're going to come back and we're going to talk about who Vanderbilt is, but first one we'll let you know about LinkedIn. LinkedIn, I don't know if you guys know if you've heard of them before, but LinkedIn is a fantastic organization in which they're going to get you the right candidate that you need for your job right away. America, the world is back at it, and over 810 million people are around the world in networks that can get you the right candidate for your hire right now. And LinkedIn slash Locked On College is going to go ahead and let you get a free job posting. That's right, a free job posting just, just for being a listener, just for listening to this, head over to LinkedIn dot com slash locked on college and you're going to get that uh that little little around the window hey we're hiring on all your social media uh, on all your accounts uh and you're going to get the right candidate instead of doing hopeless horrible interviews get the right candidate sent to you that's linked in right now all right let's talk about who vanderbilt is and i said they were improved um last week first half against old miss they showed out now it's not as embarrassing uh, as some other teams, but Vanderbilt's not a good team. Coach Lee, not uh, the best job in America. Um, and many other fan bases will say, oh yeah, but Kent State, oh yeah, Mizzou. Mizzou is a good team. They're shocking me. All I look, they went down to the swamp and they did some things. They did some things. Like, don't I know Florida's not a great team. I I truly understand that. I truly get that. But they did some things. Let's give credit where credit is due. It's a, still a hostile environment. I don't care what you can say about Florida. It's a it's a pit in Gainesville. I understand that. It's a, a 7-Eleven and a Walmart that's been abandoned for 15 years. Kmart special type place. I get that. But look, Mizzou can play. Okay, that quarterback can sling it. That running back can run. Luther can catch the ball. Um, Vanderbilt is not that. Okay, but they're improved. They are improved. As a matter of fact, total offense in the SEC, teams with lesser yards per game, Mizzou, Auburn, Kentucky, and Texas A&M. Ooh, man, A&M, Jimbo, offensive genius. How's that? How's that working out? Fool me once, not fool me twice. Um, by the way, uh, Georgia, the second best offense yard per game in the SEC. Is that good? Is that good or bad? I don't know. Vanderbilt is up there. They got a kid uh, at quarterback that can sling it. Uh, last week, they had um, A.J. Swan came in 27 of 38 for 281, two tuds, and no interceptions. That Ole Miss squad can play D. That's not a that's not a joke. That's not a dig at Lane. That's not a old Egg Bowl reference. They can play some D. Running back had over 100 yards, 27 carries. Uh, they are more kind of quote-unquote fundamental, old-school, whatever words you want to use to just say balanced uh, offensive tack. That's what they do. Now, here's where things get a little interesting. Uh, the defensive side of the ball for Vanderbilt, um, not great. Giving up, or giving up close to 480 yards per game, uh, 324 per game pass, and 155 on the run. That number in the run is going to skyrocket. Absolutely skyrocket this week. Um, look, they're not a great defense. They've actually had a couple of players at Vanderbilt that can play D defensive end and inside linebacker. Uh, secondary is a little shaky all the time at Vanderbilt. 
They got a quarterback thing sling and an offense that is forming some sort of identity that's keeping on time, that's keeping ahead of the chains, that's keeping in rhythm, balance attack. Their defense, not so great, and they're going to be exploited by this Georgia offense, just like they were exploited last week against Old Miss. Old Miss, once they got it ticking, once they got it running, it was kind of like Auburn and LSU from two weeks ago where Auburn should have never been in that game. A couple fluky plays, but the score was a lot closer than it should have been. The first half score of that Old Miss Vanderbilt game, there was a couple of busted tackles, a couple of plays that shouldn't have gone the way that it was. Uh, that's that's what this game uh, is going to really hinge on for Vanderbilt if they're going to stay in it, which, again, Georgia fan, reach for that bucket because that's what's happened the last couple of weeks. We've had fluky things. We've had people stay in there, and it's not been great. It's not been good. We haven't really appreciated it at all whatsoever. Uh, so I think this week we're going to continue what we saw last week. It's going to be carbon copy against Auburn, but against a lesser opponent with more ability to get right uh, and have the game go our way. So expect them to complete a couple of passes, better quarterback than last week. I'll grant you that. I think I think Vanderbilt has more of a passing attack than Auburn does, which is crazy to say, but I really do believe it. Their offensive line probably uh, less than, that's fair to say, less than Auburn, which wasn't great. I think we're going to feast. I think the defensive interior defensive linemen are going to get after it once more. I think we're going to see uh, a couple more sacks because of the style of play. This isn't Ashford. This isn't uh, a, a Anthony Richardson. This isn't Mizzou that can get it out quick. I think they're going to want to do more of a step back kind of kind of play action stuff. I think we're going to see more sacks for Georgia this week. Um, but don't don't anticipate you know those twenty nine carries for a running back ain't going to really reflect in a lot of yards because they're going to get maybe two yards per carry against us. This D is cooking. I really like what's going on. This offense is going to feast, I believe, against the worst defense in the SEC. We're going to come back after this and let you know about a couple updates, injury reports, and some maybe more insights to what this game looks like. But first, we'll let you know about Bill Bar. Bill Bar is the tastiest protein bar on planet Earth. They are high in protein. They are high in fiber. They are low in sugar. They are keto approved. They're on every single diet. On-the-go meal replacement. Uh, or just at-home meal replacement. Use it for a snack, use it for breakfast, use it for lunch or dinner. Pre-workout, post-workout, whatever you need, Built Bar has it. And right now, they're going to give you 15% off your entire order with promo code Locked On. Go over to BuiltBar.com. Whatever you order, 15% off your entire order at BuiltBar.com. All right, a couple of updates. Uh, it looks like, smile, Mondo, it looks like uh, A.D. Mitchell, Jalen Carter, no goes. Not happening in this game. Won't be playing. And just basically instead, maybe for a half, uh, if rumors are that the shoulder isn't right, he had to come early out to warm up last week. He had to be uh, cautious with that. He's overcompensating with the overthrows, if all of that is true. And if that's what's really going on, I anticipate seeing Carson Beck a lot sooner in this game. Uh, I hope to see him. I hope. I mean, again, reach for the bucket, Georgia fan, and you're hating me for even saying this, but I hope that's all true. Uh, but it looks like AD is going to get another week, two weeks, really. Jalen Carter is not even going to attempt it. Don't even try it. Don't even suit up. Don't even come out on the field. Like, like get, get in, get up in a box somewhere, man. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, Jalen, we need you down the stretch run. I'm totally fine with that. Uh, Logue and bear Walthar are doing, are doing an admirable job in your stead. Uh, AD Mitchell, this one is a little, this one hurts for me. Not seeing AD out there, I, he's, again, Kirby's famous line, he can go if we need him. He can. He would be able to go if we need him. He'd be able to go if we need him. He always says that. Uh, here's here's what I think. I think AD Mitchell is going to get uh, no run this week so that during the bye week, he can get a lot of run be, and practice hard as hard can get to test out that knee, knowing that they don't have uh, a game at all. On Saturday or, or in two Saturdays now, I think he's going to test out the extremities. I think he's going to test out the health. I think he's going to see what he can do, and if he's able to to tone it down this week, if he's able to go full bore next week and really test it out with an off week happening, then he's going to know they're going to have a really good game plan going into Florida week of what to do with AD because I think we're going to need him a lot more. That Florida defense is good, guys. They're good. I, I have no problem saying that. Not great, but good. Uh, so. That's my prediction on him. Jalen Carter, uh, just rest. Don't even do anything. Just take the next 14 days off and then just suit up against Florida. I'm fine with that. Um, have no problem with that being your plan. Smile on and look, um, inexperience. It, it, this really hurts him more than it does anything else because Ryan Davis, uh, as well as Trez, uh, look, they're, 
they're in there. They're running around. They're doing fine. They're going sideline to sideline. I think it hurts him more as a, not this defense as a whole, but more of him and his development, what he could be and the ceiling that he has, which is very, 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 very high. Um, that those are the people that we're hearing aren't going to be able to go. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, but look, I'll, I'll tell you this right now. Uh, Kendall Milton also uh, not even close to returning. It sounds like um, health is a big problem. It sounds like that growing injury is going to sideline him for a little bit. And uh, look, you, Georgia fan, two things to be true at the same time. I'm excited for more carries for other guys. I'm not happy that Kendall got hurt. I would like to see him get carries. He was doing very, very well before the injury. I was very, very excited. The reality is now other people got to step up. Now the game's got to change. Now we have to go. And the people that we're leaning on are a rookie uh, that looks just like a, a bowling ball of mass destruction. Kenny Mack, who is leaning forward every single play. And Dejon Edwards, who is Frank Gore Jr. Jr. Because there's already Frank Gore Jr. Uh, I'm happy about who we have in the backfield. And I think we're going to rely on them. I think we're going to see out. They're going to show out more in this game. Uh, it's going to be fun to watch. Look, that's Locked On Bulldogs here on Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'll be back tomorrow doing locks and final score prediction of the Georgia Vanderbilt game. We will see you guys then.